You know, I'm doing, I don't do this because I'm a f***ed up kid. I do this because it's my job. Like, you started talking to me, buddy. Get away. Ah, 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 ah. You get away from me. Watch your kids. Go wa walk away. He's just gotten worse. He's gotten more degenerate, more aggressive, more hostile. Don't, don't take pictures of me. I'll break your camera. Mm, there you go. Oh, hey! Ricky! Ricky! Nah, if anything, I feel like I'm just, ma like, this is all, like, real sh Like, I'm just showing that, like, I make authentic videos and- ah! oh, You're leaving too bad, little man. What happened? Don't call me little man. I will too. Why? Cause you're a clown, man. This is a resort. People are trying to chill and relax. You know my dad owns this place, right? Yo, if you stop fucking with them, you're the one that came up to me first. Yo, you're the clown. You didn't have to say anything. I came in. I don't want to be filmed. Oh, fuck. What's up? Oh, no, yo, stop, stop. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? 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 What did you learn, though? What was the lesson from all that? Not to take Nothing. I'll speak. do it again. I don't care. Jack Doherty is one of the fastest growing and farthest reaching content creators on the earth today. 13 million YouTube subscribers and 4.7 billion views on that channel alone, along with 9 million followers on TikTok. But there's a reason that most people over the age of 12 don't really like him. Jack walks around picking fights with people and then hides behind his massive security guards when his victims try to defend themselves. He harasses retail employees and plays the victim. He films and bullies families who are out out in public just trying to live their lives, and generally, he makes the world a worse place to live in. A lot of commentators have said that Jack has faced no repercussions for his actions. I disagree. In fact, Jack has been banned from countless college campuses, stores, he's been sued for millions of dollars in court, and he's been arrested countless times. What sets Jack apart is that he's been empowered by his parents his entire life to continue making these decisions, and he's coddled by his immense wealth and the ability to buy his way out of almost any sticky situation that he creates for himself. But how does Jack make his money? Short form content pays next to nothing and Jack's long form videos aren't getting nearly enough views to fund a $10 million mansion, a McLaren, a Lamborghini, a Tesla, and private jet charters to the weekly douchebag convention. What if there was something even more sinister going on? I'm here to tell you that there is a method to Jack's madness, that all of his antics are connected, intentional, and have a dark goal in mind. And once you see what I'm talking about, all of this insanity starts to make a lot more sense. Let me show you exactly what I mean. But before we get into that, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Listen, it's a new year and you and I both know that the gym's gonna be empty again by March, but if there's one resolution anybody can keep, it's eating better. Let HelloFresh help with that by joining America's number one meal kit today. And say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. HelloFresh has more options to support your goals than ever before. Dig into their biggest menu yet with 45 plus dinner options and even more market items that suit any healthy lifestyle. Make wellness your breeziest resolution with quick, convenient recipes delivered right to you. Just choose your recipes and select a delivery date. HelloFresh handles the meal planning and the shopping, so all you have to do is open your box of pre-portioned ingredients and get cooking. Click the link in the description or use my code and get free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Now let's get right back into the story. Just a fair warning, I'm gonna have to do a lot of censoring in this video because there's a lot of fights and clips and other things that YouTube has already censored other people for covering. And so I'm gonna have to put a big yellow demonetized symbol over some of that stuff. But if you wanna see a full uncensored version of this video, you can check it out over on my Patreon, it's live now. If you feel like watching that, that's cool. If not, that's cool too. Thanks for watching. Jack started posting on YouTube in 2016, just a few days before his 13th birthday. If you can imagine a middle schooler who's just graduated from his iPad baby phase and is now obsessed obsessed with FouseyTube 3 a.m. prank calls and Jake and Logan Paul maverick degeneracy, you can imagine Jack Doherty's early content on YouTube. Sociopath is boiled down someone who is m just more savage than everyone else. This kid absorbed the worst parts of the internet and somehow transformed them into something even worse. It started out innocently enough, but there are pretty obvious signs that Jack was raised in a fairly well-off home. His content consisted of unboxing expensive things, flying a plane, music videos in front of mansions and expensive cars, and stocking rice gum outside the old FaZe house in LA. That's rice gum! That's rice gum! That's rice gum! That's rice gum! That's rice gum. Jack has said that after starting his YouTube channel in September, nine months later in June, he was making forty to fifty thousand dollars a month off of YouTube alone, and the views he was getting at the time do back this claim up. 
3.7 million views on a video flipping bottles with his brother Michael, 1.1 million views being a nuisance to his neighbors, and 3.2 million views making fun of lip sync videos by lip syncing over their videos. As soon as Jack had some money in his bank account, he used it to make himself even more of a nuisance. Ninja was the most popular streamer on Twitch at the time, so Jack took to donation trolling him for attention. Jack donated $100 to Ninja multiple times, saying he would give more if Ninja would call him his dad. Dirty, you could give me a million dollars. I will never call you my dad. Oh well. When Ninja said no, Jack switched his tactics and started calling Ninja his dad. Maybe when he when maybe when his when Fortnite dies and his Twitch dies, he'll be like, "Damn it, I wish I took that 500 bucks, but it's good. It's all right. It's all right for me, boys." This incredible Oscar-worthy piece of content cleared 1 million views and got Tyler Fortnite Ninja Blevins attention. So, of course, Jack did what any normal 15-year-old would do in this situation. He leaked the DMs and painted a completely different narrative about what had actually happened. He just honestly doesn't care. He doesn't care about like his fans. He doesn't care about anything besides money like he's doing everything for the money that's funny jack i sure hope your entire life doesn't turn out to be a reckless pursuit of money to the detriment of anyone unfortunate enough to be around you let's find out shall we pestering and trash talking ninja wasn't an isolated incident for jack this became his entire mo for content how can i use my wealth to harass and annoy someone who doesn't even know who i am and has never done anything wrong to me and turn that into views and money for myself excuse me think i can have a bite of your food I'm really hungry. Don't touch your food. What? Don't touch your food. I brought my own silverware. It's no, all good. No, no, no. Away. Over the next couple years, Jack would desperately ratchet up the stakes for his increasingly ravenous child audience, doing things like filming Walmart employees without their permission. Huh. Yo, I need you to get out the store. What? I need you to get out the oh, store. I'm sorry, I was just playing around. Off the chain. Need, all right, we need we to get out the store. All right, we stop and we'll just buy something. We need to get out the okay, store. Okay, wait, I'll get out the store. Don't, don't take pictures of me. I'll break your camera. Mm, no, you won't. Yes, I will. I doubt it. I'm 15. Don't go to jail. I don't care if you're 15. Don't go to jail. You, re you respect me. All right, and you respect me. Go, oh, hey! Ricky! 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 Luckily though, Jack learned from this and returned to the same Walmart to apologize to the employee who he had just harassed and filmed without his permit. Psych, he made a follow-up video called Confronting the Walmart Employee That Punched Me. The guy's a really recognizable face and I'll put a picture on the screen right here. His name is... Got his name tag. We had called the Walmart tags. actually yesterday yeah. to see, and the lady like couldn't give his information because I guess privacy or whatever. But she didn't confirm, but she didn't deny that yeah. he worked there. If he's in there, bud, it's gonna be a crazy day. I'm bit. throwing hands, literally. I'm throwing hands. It's back. Insane, buddy. Yeah, I guess privacy or whatever. Can you imagine being a Walmart employee and you're just doing your job one day and you ask some kid to leave the store for acting a fool and then he films you without your permission and says that you punched him? That video then gets 5.8 million views and he plasters your face in the thumbnail. And that's not enough. He comes back for another video after stalking you, figures out your name and adds it to the video as him and a friend are looking for you so they can physically beat you on camera. I'm throwing hands, literally. I'm he then walks around the store where you work, showing your picture to all your coworkers and looking for you. The only tiny glimmer of hope in this entire clout chasing dumpster fire of a saga is the fact that Jack turned the comments off on this video, suggesting that his audience may have grown enough brain cells to question if hunting an innocent Walmart employee is actually good content. Luckily, they never found the guy and end up getting chased out of the store after finally harassing several people and hijacking the intercom system. Maybe next time we'll get him, guys. Occasionally, though, Jack would get banned from all the Walmarts and shopping malls that his parents cared to drive him to and would have to resort to tormenting people a little closer to home. This gave Jack the ingenious idea of stealing his brother's brand new BMW in 2019 when Jack was just 16 years old and didn't have a driver's license yet. Okay, Michael, I promise you, it's done. It's done. No. Okay, Michael, I promise you, it's I'm gonna done. I'm going to smash this camera. Michael, Michael, don't touch Michael, my camera. Stop. Don't touch me. Michael, Jack! Michael, stop! By this point, Jack had amassed a whopping 2.5 million subscribers and an ego the size of one of his pretentious empty mansions. In an interview that same month, he said, Everyone thought I would become a professional athlete because I was good at every single sport there is. Instead, I ended up posting YouTube videos. Speaking of mansions, Jack had already bought a house. Well, kind of. You, what? What'd you say what'd just you, now? I bought a house. How is, uh, sir, how is that possible? You're 12. It's, it's my money, but like under my dad's name. 
Listen, you, you're, did you just say you're laundering money for your father? No, that's not. Laundering money? I don't know if that's he good says, or bad. Jack had already made nearly a million dollars off of YouTube and was giving it to his dad to invest. Despite already having run-ins with the law for his pranks, trespassing, and being a general blight on the earth, Jack's parents were more than happy and eager to help him become an all-consuming machine that sucks humanity out of the world and converts it into YouTube ad revenue. His parents appeared in such classics as ignoring my mom for 24 hours, saying no to my mom for 24 hours, and my dad says yes to everything for 24 hours. Jack, I hate to break this to you, but I think your dad's been saying yes to everything your entire life. I don't think you've ever heard your parents say the word no one time. Okay, now very easy with the gas, very easy. <laughs> All of these wholesome family hijinks caught the attention of the world's most publicized drama therapist, Dr. Phil. So naturally, Jack and his family agreed to go on the show. In the episode, Dr. Phil asks Jack's brother Michael about what happened the day Jack stole his car. Hey, in the moment, it was I, it was not that funny. That was your new car, right? Mm -hmm. Daddy bought it. Yeah, and also, he, I, I thought he was going to crash or something. And also, I, I think he was just trying to... If I crash a car, I would buy a new one, let's be real. No worries. I'm, yeah, talking no worries. To, I'm talking to your brother and you're Fact. interrupting. You're right. Yeah, no worries, man. If I had crashed your car, I would have totally bought you a new one, man. Let's be real. The car had sentimental value to Michael, but Jack doesn't understand sentimental value. Everything in Jack's world can be reduced to a dollar value for him. His belongings, his houses, his content, his friends, and even his family are just dollar figures to Jack and are just as interchangeable as one dollar bill to the next. It's all in jokes. Like It's all like, you know, grow up, have, live life, have fun. When the Dr. Phil production team asked Jack's parents about this, their answer explains a lot. It's hard to punish Jack by taking away his phone or, or shutting off his computer because that's how he makes his living. I feel guilty when we turn his phone and computer off because I feel like I'm a bad mom. So they refuse to intervene in Jack's hijinks because that's how he makes his living. Translation, he's making us a sh ton of money and we really like that. Dr. Phil ended up kicking Jack off the show because he kept talking over everyone and didn't listen. Shocker. I think they're so creative. No one's ever done those types of stuff. Okay, we're done here. I'm sorry. Jack also came up with the great idea of pranking the police during this time. Towards the end of 2020, right after Jack had turned 17, Jack and his entourage went to the St. Petersburg Pier in Florida, where Jack drank fake beer and acted drunk in front of the police. 17, you're not supposed to have that, and you're acting a little bit off, so you better get it together. You better keep an eye on him, okay? Yeah. He's your buddy? Yeah. Okay, throw yeah. that. I'm just so here, man. Officer, you can't push me like that. Go to jail? Officer yeah. for, for what? Go to jail for what, officer for? Open container in public. Your mom an open container. That, that's uh, it's 0% it's alcohol. Hey, yo, chill, chill. Nah, yo, it's 0% alcohol. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you can't yeah, act like that. I'm joking, officer. What are you like talking that. about? Really? Do. Yo, what the f Wait, what did I do? Yo, chill. You're being so rough. Try not to say. Come on. Really? What can I get in trouble for? Honestly, like, I can't get in trouble for acting. What is that? How is that a crime? Uh, disorderly impact or disorderly conduct. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? There's no way that I'm joking around with my friend. There's no way acting a fool is illegal. I think you're just doing that because he got pressed. There's no way. You got what? You just got pressed. You can't like, there's nothing you could do. Pressed about what? The fact that it was fake beer. You knew it was fake beer from the beginning. That's why I thought we were joking. After Jack was put in handcuffs and sat in the back of a police car, his mic is still hooked up to the camera. And he tells his friend Ricky, who's filming to- Ricky, do something, bro. Put the camera away, do something, bro. Put the camera away and do something, bro? What do you want him to do? Attack the group of 15 police officers? Smash the bulletproof glass and pull your ass out of the car? Is Ricky the Hulk? He doesn't look like the Hulk. He looks like he wants to sell me an iPhone at the mall. Unfortunately, the comments are turned off on this video, so we may never know if any of Jack's audience got to test this cutting edge method of pranking the police and getting arrested. Turning comments off and mass deleting comments has become something of a staple for Jack, with people claiming that their comments are still being deleted even on five-year-old videos. Jack's relationship with his audience has always been tenuous at best, since people usually have a pretty good radar for when someone is genuinely trying to make good content versus just milking them for every penny possible. It's painfully obvious when looking at this content that Jack is the milkman and we are meant to be the cows. But early in 2021, the cows started to wander off the farm. Jack was still pulling two to 300,000 views per video, but it was nothing compared to just a couple years earlier when he was pulling millions upon millions of views for videos with little puppies and poopy emojis in the thumbnails. So Jack switched up his content strategy with fresh ideas like, how about instead of harassing people in Walmarts, I harass people on college campuses. Say something. 
Cool. Excuse me? Excuse me, are you gonna warn them that, like, I've okay, been- we don't allow recording on I've actually been touched by one of the teachers here. Okay. So uh, I just wanna warn you guys, like, that's a possibility. Thank you so much for coming on our tour. Unfortunately, we do not allow any audio or video recording. Uh, so. It's not audio or video, it's like- Jack, thank you for being brave. All right, hello, everybody, man. Moving. No problem, we, we stand up. You're part of the problem, if, it, not It's not too late to turn around, guys. This guy is a capper and UCLA pays him to lie. After interrupting several lectures and harassing women with sexual and unwanted pickup lines, security was finally called on this clown and his circus vacated the premises. Students on the UCLA subreddit were understandably upset with Jack, and one said that a professor had filed a police report with the campus police. Another commenter said that they were in the video without their consent and wished Jack had blurred them, confirming my suspicion that unlike other prank YouTubers, and I do use that word very loosely, Jack's scenarios in his videos are mostly real, making all of these people unwilling and non-consenting victims of this garbage tier tomfoolery. Despite being on his best behavior, Jack is now banned from all UCLA campuses. There are eight planets in the galaxy, but there will be seven when I destroy your eight. Excuse me? She won't give me her Snapchat. Sir, we're leaving. It's October 2021. Jack's insatiable desire for views and money have taken him to places most people wouldn't even go with a gun. But now, the views were drying up. To remedy this, Jack hatched an ingenious plan. I know, let's fake videos about people with guns. Police! And instead of long-form content, let's cater to the algorithm with short-form content. Oh yeah, harder, harder daddy. Hey, oh yeah, hey, hey. oh yeah, daddy. You know about that light? No. Hey, I'm free! It worked! Let's do it again! Yo! Oh! <laughs> Yo, look at him! Yo, wait, wait! Oh! What? Oh. Oh. See ya! Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Oh my god, this is an infinite view glitch. We did it. When your white friend says the n-word, 33 million views. How to get out of any arrest, 5.5 million views. Asking cop what his body count is, 1.6 million views. Jack Doherty, you are a genius. But there's just one problem. Shorts don't make any money, and I love money. I just turned 18. I could start an OnlyFans. And so he did. Jack started pinning comments on all of his videos telling kids where they could find and purchase his adult content. Man, that was a great video of Jack punching a cop in the balls. I'm gonna go jack off to him on OnlyFans now. Hee <laughs> hee. But Jabroni, there might be adults watching these. You can't say that Jack is explicitly selling adult content to children. I got banned for writing Heelys in school. 42 million views. Pinned comment is OnlyFans. How many pumps does it take for a wubble bubble to blow up? 17 million views. Pinned comment is OnlyFans. When your mom catches you saying the F word, 8.8 .8 million views. Pinned comment is OnlyFans. Okay, I think we've seen enough to say for fairly certain that Jack Doherty and his parents are intentionally and knowingly taking advantage of the YouTube Shorts algorithm to get children off the site and onto OnlyFans where they will more than likely swipe mommy's credit card and get addicted to p That is, assuming the kids survive punching cops and throwing bricks at police cars like they see in Jack's videos for long enough to get home and log into OnlyFans. The ones that aren't filled with bullet holes or sentenced to life in Supermax prison will have a good shot at paying to look at Jack Doherty's abs. But that raises a new problem. Nobody wants to pay money to see more of this guy. He can't even get them to watch him for free unless he's committing a felony in 60 seconds or less. Hmm, I'm getting lots of shorts views now, but nobody wants to pay for my OnlyFans. The first big money I ever made in my life, I first became a multimillionaire by running a webcam studio. So I had beautiful women sitting on computers talking to guys on webcams from all around the world. That's how I first made my money. Eureka. Jack started recruiting girls, getting them to set up an OnlyFans and featuring them in his videos. Wilson versus Spalding. Which ball will explode first? We started Pimping, I mean managing OnlyFans girls turned out to be the secret sauce to bring Jack all the views and money he could ever dream of. Jack's views skyrocketed from 712,000 one week in December 2021 to 132 million views during that same week one year later. In March of 2022, Jack went on a podcast to reconnect with some of his old buddies, including Ricky Ireland. They had come a long way from doxing and hunting Walmart employees, and Jack explained that he was being sued for a million dollars for trespassing, and he had just finished probation for an innocent prank video that he did. Jack explained that he was in public filming random people's feet without their consent and approached a family and began filming the mom's feet. The dad was upset and called the police. What a buzzkill. Eventually, Jack was arrested, but now he had learned his lesson and he was a changed man. Like I was supposed to do like 10 therapy sessions for, and I only did like three of them and they still let me off because they just didn't care and I didn't care. So like- Wait, it, therapy sessions? Like I like- For like, probation? Like Zoom, like yeah, like like counseling, like- Oh. 
to make me not like such a fucked up person. <laughs> well, what did you learn though? What was the lesson from all that? Not to take nothing. Of I'll do feet? it again. I don't care. At this point, there are nine girls listed on Jack's website that he's managing. And who knows how much of a cut he's taking or if they're getting any money at all compared to what they're actually bringing in. But what we can figure out, thanks to this video posted by Financial Wolf, is how much money Jack is making off their barely legal and barely clothed backs. In about a year, Jack went from rich to extremely wealthy. He had moved to Miami, he says to save money on taxes, and was living in a $30,000 a month mansion at the time, his new one's more expensive. He had about $800,000 worth of cars parked there and regularly wore a watch worth $250,000. What do you think that most people do wrong like on social media? Because most people don't make the kind of money you're making. OnlyFans. Just from this video alone, we can figure out how much Jack was making from OnlyFans per month at the time. In a month, how much money could you make? Uh, take a guess and I'll say higher or lower. Wow, wow, you've been PR trained, you've been media trained. 750000 Good guess, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, low key around that. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. So he's making about $750,000 a month total. In this same video, he says he's netting $30,000 a month from real estate. Oh yeah, he owns 21 rental properties now. And let me just say, can you imagine this guy being your landlord? The guy who's been evicted multiple times for getting into loud fights with content creators who are one day away from being institutionalized in a mental hospital and having a gun pulled on him by the world's most famous in Best content creators? Yeah, if this guy is my landlord, I'm not paying my rent ever. Anyway, he says YouTube is about 10% of his income, so that's $75,000 per month. He says he makes about $5,000 a month from TikTok, and let's be generous and say he's making about $10,000 a month from merch sales and his course. Because of course he's selling a course, he's copying Andrew Tate's monetization strategy to the letter. And who wouldn't want to pay $97 to learn how to sell your soul? Seems like a good deal to me. So that leaves $630,000 a month from OnlyFans. And I feel very confident in guessing that most of that is from these girls he's featuring. By the fall of 2023, Jack had caught the attention of mainstream YouTubers and podcasters who were all quick to ask him, what's it like being on Dr. Phil? If you really think about it, Dr. Phil capitalizes off minors problems. Like he just targets these kids. You're mad at Dr. Phil because he capitalizes on minors problems. He targets kids? Jack, you have an entire series of shorts on YouTube and TikTok called Giving Kids My Credit Card, where you walk around with very young children and buy them Crocs and whatever else little kids want, and then you link all the kids watching to OnlyFans in the pinned comment. Dr. Phil capitalizes off minors problems. If Dr. Phil capitalizes on minors problems, at least he doesn't walk around the mall with them and try to get them addicted to I don't do this because I'm a fucked up kid. I do this because it's my job, like at the end of the day. You do this because it's your job? You specifically target kids with short form content and try to get them addicted to paid adult content because it's your job? That's weird. I must have missed that booth at the career fair. How many people throughout history have justified their actions with, I was just doing my job? You're in good company, Jack. Lots of upstanding, good people rely on that defense to justify their actions. If anything, I feel like I'm just, ma like, this is all like real shit. I'm just showing that like I make authentic videos and yeah, this is all like real shit, Jack. You make like authentic videos, bro. Throwing brick on top car prank. Oh my God, Jack, you're right. I didn't believe you, but then I saw throwing brick on a cop car prank. 9.1 million views, link to OnlyFans. This is real shit. You do make like authentic videos. But surely, despite all of this, Jack must respect the women that he exploit, I mean employs, to make all these millions of dollars, right? The brand content, no brands wants to work in OnlyFans, girl. Let's be real, we're kidding, we're I past just, that shit. You're already know. disappointing your family, just fucking no, <laughs> try your best to not, make it the not, best scenario possible. Not, Why are you trying to convince girls to be hoppers? Just be like, girl, fuck that's your main oh, thing. Right. Honestly, uh, I love no, telling you guys, but a I lot of women you like short. Oh, oh my god, what are we gonna do about it? Fuck you! No, I'm kidding, sorry. It doesn't matter. They, they, don't, they don't have the brain cells to answer the question, but it's fine. Your son came to you and said, Hey, Dad, I saw mom naked. We're rich, son. Who gets a fuck? Okay. No, I'm kidding. You guys don't do only fans. You have a real job. Yeah. Okay, okay, W. I, I'm doubling down. Fuck that bitch. Corinna is an OnlyFans for triple down. Boom. 
But short form content and OnlyFans wasn't enough to fuel Jack's Napoleon complex sized ego. A third ingredient was needed to bring even more views and more money. But how else can I get people to click on my videos other than scantily clad, barely legal women twerking next to police cars? What else even is there in the world? Fight videos. In September of 2023, Jack started streaming on Kick, a streaming platform where pretty much anything goes. He had already experimented with posting fight videos videos on YouTube with such classics as Crazy Old Man Flips Out On Me. Notice how immediately angry Jack gets when he realizes this guy is calling him Little Man. Jack is really insecure about his height and he tries to play it off sometimes, but it genuinely does bother him. In his Your Height Is Your Budget videos, he will tell his OnlyFans girls that he's 4 foot 11 to get out of giving them a serious answer. But I found some of Jack's traffic tickets in the public record and he's been booked by the Florida police multiple times as being five foot seven. The next thing the discerning viewer will notice about this video is that Jack is walking around with private security. The people Jack hires to do this are typically gigantic guys who have a tendency to lay hands on people before they've done anything at all to deserve it. Keep that in mind because that is going to become extremely important very soon. All right, right, it's time to go. I'm gonna be a politician, dog. Wow, that crazy old man really flipped out on you, Jack. I can't believe you made it through that harrowing series of events unscathed. From here, the physical confrontations, conflagration, and constipation only ramp up for Jack as he comes so very close to being able to sh out a weak little punch. But at the last minute, he goes and hides behind his security guard time and time again. A lot of times, Jack will assemble his own Avengers squad of content superheroes like his dad, his girlfriend McKinley, who he met and got into OnlyFans, his security guard, and himself. They will together roam public places looking for bad people that need a taste of that authentic Jack Doherty justice. Like this guy with his two little toddler kids enjoying a day at the pier. He looks like a menace to the public. We got out of there, motherfuckers. Let's go. Watch the language. There's kids around here. I didn't say any curse words. What'd I say? Just watch your language. What'd I say? You got a stupid shirt on over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, your bro. kids can't read, what are you though. About? A stupid shirt? What does it say? Fuck you, you fucking fuck. Yeah, I don't see a problem with that. I'm sure this security guard is very professional and non confrontational. Right, you, get away from you me. started talking to me, buddy. Get away from me. Uh, 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 uh. You get away from me. Watch your kids. Go wa walk away. The most striking parts of this, besides the part where Jack accosts and has his bodyguard get in a scuffle with a guy with little tiny kids standing right there, is the fact that Jack posted this himself on Twitter. And not only that, Jack says that guy clearly was trying to instigate something when he didn't have to. I'm seeing your kids watch. Uh, you, get away from you started me. talking to me, buddy. Get away from me. Uh, 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 you get away from me. Watch your kids, go watch. Yeah, Jack, you're totally an innocent party here. The Jack Doherty Avengers were just defending themselves. Jack goes on to say, when I go out, I have no intention of starting shit. It just happens. Yeah, that makes sense, Jack. When you get up in people's faces for no reason and act like a tough guy, stuff does just happen again and again and again. And Jack is always quick to post a link in the comments for you to buy his course or sign up for whatever girls only fans he was walking with at the time and just happens to manage. Interesting that innocent people always seem to get attacked in the streets when Jack has something to promote. One of the promotions Jack offers on his website is access to a Discord server where you can sign up to make money for posting Jack's clips. The current rate is $100 per 1 million views, which might be the funniest thing Jack has ever posted. The result of this is infinite Jack Doherty fans posting his clips all over Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, spreading their disease to previously peaceful parts of the internet and assimilating them to be used as just more biomass for the Jack Doherty grave mind. I am a monument to all your sins. These public fights reached a crescendo when Jack and his bodyguard went to an influencer Halloween party in Los Angeles. Stop, stop. I'm just saying, y'all say, no, just stop. Walk. Tone, stop. Tone, stop. Tone, stop. This is Kane Kong, a bodyguard that Jack has hired multiple times. But what most people don't know about Kane is that he was formerly security for another infantile influencer, Dub Baby. He's listed as 6 foot 9, or 1.21 Jack Doherty's, and 370 pounds. When working for Dub Baby, he was famous for such alleged incidents as knocking out a woman for getting too close, beating a man near to death and into a coma for trying to get a photo with the baby, and many more wholesome moments of security and de-escalation. Let's see what happens next. Oh, oh, oh no, yo, stop, stop. No, are you Hey, what's up? Hey, one by one, what's up, man? Security guard, are you? 
Whoa. After ruining Corinna Cop's Halloween party, Jack is just a tiny bit butthurt. Drop the Addy. Guys, Neon was here two days ago, right? Y'all yeah. know where he was at? Someone's gotta know. That's all I'm gonna say. We're at that same spot with the taco truck. Where's this? I wonder where this taco truck's located. That's weird. It's almost like the address is right there. Oh my God. Oh, that's so weird. After the party, Corinna tweeted that the man that Kane Kong had punched is actually a lawyer. As of this moment, there are no lawsuits filed against Jack or Kane Kong in Los Angeles, so it's possible that Jack used some of the $650,000 a month he's making off OnlyFans girls to pay this guy off and settle out of court. Just another day in the life of Jack Doherty. As Christmas time approached in 2023, Jack was getting in the festive spirit. And what better way to spend Christmas than make your family come to your influencer mansion in Miami that looks closer to a tacky advertisement for OnlyFans than a cozy Christmas getaway. During the festivities, Jack got to catch up with his brother, Michael. Why the f would you move to Texas? Texas is so much better than Florida. You're retarded. Name one person that's in Texas. My other friend, my relative. You pick random f over me. You will do way better in life just being here around me and you know it. You'll have no fun in Texas. No, we're doing what? Sucking Gee, I wonder why no one wants to be around you, Jack. You're certainly just a ball of holiday cheer. But this video created more than just hundreds of hours of work for the sweatshop workers who make the OnlyFans neon signs. It was right around this time that Natalie Reynolds, one of Jack's nine OnlyFans girls, tweeted, Jack Doherty has paid someone to take down and ban my Instagram account. Insecure narcissist is mad he can't make money off me anymore, and I'm releasing the truth. Stick to grooming minors. She follows this up by calling him a scammer who took over $1 million from her. After she saw Jack's video where he gives all his OnlyFans girls Rolexes that don't fit, she said, Jack spent hundreds of thousands on Christmas gifts with money he scammed from others because it'll help him with taxes coming up, otherwise money goes to the government. He didn't buy any of these presents to be nice, all the people around him are clueless. She went on to say that he scams these girls and takes 100% of their revenue. While Natalie's accusations are about as spicy as all of Jack's pinned comments and I want to believe her, she's yet to post any real proof or corroborating information. I reached out to her to ask for an interview, but she has hasn't replied, and it looks like other YouTubers like Willie Mac Show have done the same with no results. So the jury's still out on these particular allegations. Since then, Jack has continued getting into fights, including one where Jack's attack dog, I mean security guard, got a little too far away from Jack. Someone was able to sneak half of a punch in, leading Jack to run off camera crying. This is currently Jack's most viewed clip on his entire channel, and it's titled Twink Destroyed. Jack was banned from kick on January 7th after a raucous party that featured a midget boxing match devolved into an all-out brawl amongst everyone in attendance. During this fight, guns were allegedly pulled out, and it came within an inch of turning this massively cringe event into a mass casualty event. The terms of Jack's kick ban? About one day. He's back now. It's fine though. I'm sure he learned his lesson. And now in an even newer development, commentary videos talking about Jack Doherty are getting mysteriously copyright claimed. With YouTubers like Mimulus and Bills YT coming out and saying they've received false copyright claims on videos where no infringement occurs. The company doing the claiming is Superbam Inc. And it appears there's lots of people saying their videos about FoozyTube were claimed by Superbam. It's possible that the commentary videos about Jack included clips where Jack was hanging out with FoozyTube, and that's why they got claimed. The reason I say this is Jack replied to Mimulus' tweet saying, that's not me claiming claiming those vids. Yes, Jack, we know it's not you, but is it a company that you hired to claim these videos on your behalf? Even though Jack has a similar relationship with the truth to Patrick Bateman, just him saying this publicly is probably enough for YouTube to decide these disputes in the favor of the commentary YouTubers. Time will tell if copyright claims and strikes on content mentioning Jack are the result of overzealous companies like Superbam or the next evolution of Jack's insatiable quest to take over the world and get as much money as possible through exploiting humans' basest instincts to make a quick buck. The ultimate problem with Jack's disposition towards the world is that he lives in an alternate reality, and he's selling that alternate reality to kids under the impression that it's attainable. If you just take my course, you too can make eight figures. You can be surrounded by OnlyFans girls and drive a McLaren and get pulled over by the cops and booked into jail at a towering five foot seven inches over and over again. You can own 21 houses and have your dad run your real estate empire while you walk around in public with security looking for people to assault so you can get a viral clip to funnel kids to get addicted to OnlyFans and make you even more money. You can post hundreds upon hundreds of short form videos and garner billions of views just to link them to addictive paid adult content. And the truth is, all this is attainable. Jack did it, and the only two ingredients he needed were wealthy parents unwilling to tell him no on anything ever and to sell his soul. Jack 
has both. He was willing to do it. I think he's willing to do anything for money. Are you? If you like this video, you'll probably like my video I made about iDubs called Rewriting the Past, which you can watch right here. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay weird, internet. See you next time. Peace.